In the last video, I showed you how to draw truth tables for different well-formed formulas and the more complex ones. I gave you this question to draw complete truth tables for two of these following whiffs. So I'm going to go over the answers here. But as always, if the videos have supported you and you've learned from them and you have the financial means to support the channel, you can hit the join button below to join as a member for 2 or $5 Canadian a month to help me continue making videos for this channel for free for everyone. Uh, if you don't have the means to do that, liking, commenting, sharing help just as much, so I appreciate all your support, regardless of which method you take. So, let's go over the solutions here. We're going to do the quick truth tables for this. So P and not Q, arrow not Q or not P. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to see, okay, we have two different variables here, P and Q, so we're going to need four rows. So for P, I'm going to give it a 1, 1, 0, 0 truth table. So we'll do that for each P here. And for Q, we're going to alternate 1, 0, 1, 0. So uh, line 1 and 3 will have 1s for Q, and lines 2 and 4 will have 0 for Q. OK, uh, we have some negations here. I'm going to take care of the negations first when I can. So I'm going to do the negation of Q, the negation of Q, and the negation of P. So we'll do th those three. Uh, basically, with the negation, it's just going to flip the truth value. So instead of Q being 1, 0, 1, 0, not Q is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. That's going to be the same for both of these not Qs. And then for not P, instead of 1, 1, 0, 0, I'm going to flip those values and get 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so our unary connectives are done. That was fairly straightforward. Now we're going to take a look at our binary connectives. So P and not Q. This is going to take information from P, information from not. Remember, the conjunction is true only when both of its conjuncts are true. So in the first row, 1 and 0 gives us 0. In the second row, 1 and 1 will give us 1. Third row, 0, 0 gives us 0. And then the fourth row, 0, 1 gives us 0. So uh, that's the line for the conjunction here, 0, 1, 0, 0. On the right side, let's do the disjunction. So this is going to take information from not Q, so from the not column, and from not P, that column. So the disjunction is true when either one of those is true. So in the first row, we have 0, 0, so that gives us 0, because neither of them are true. In the second row, we have 1, 0. So 1, 0, at least one of those is 1, so the disjunct is true. In the third row, we have 0, 1. Well, we have at least 1, 1. That's fine. And in the fourth row, we have 1, 1. Both of those are true, so that at least one is true. Therefore, the third, or the last, call, the last row there is true. Okay, finally we'll take a look at the main connective, which is the conditional. That's going to grab information from the and on the left and the or on the right. So I'm going to put these boxes in orange so that way I know exactly which columns I'm taking my information from. So I'm comparing these two. So remember, the arrow is only false if we have one arrow zero. Otherwise it's true. So in the first row, we have 0, arrow 0, so that's going to be true. In the second row, we have 1, arrow 1, that's true. In the third row, we have 0, arrow 1, that's true. And in the fourth row, we have 0, arrow 1, which is also true. So in the end, we find that no matter what the values of P and Q are, the entire well-formed formula is true. So I'm going to get rid of that mess. I'm going to put an arrow at the bottom to signal that's the main connective. And just to visualize it, I'm going to also put a box around it. So that way we know this is the final value of the entire well-formed formula. Okay, that's question one. Let's do question two. Here we have x, y, and z. So that means we're going to have eight different rows. And to make sure that this is pretty, I'm going to add some lines here so I can make sure everything's lined up. So for x's, I'm going to do four ones followed by four zeros. So let me get those in draw those in so we have eight different lines. For y's, I'm going to alternate 1, 1, 0, 0. So lines 1, 2, 5, and 6 will be 1's for y. And then lines 3, 4, 7, and 8 will be 0 under y. 
And then for z, we're going to alternate 1 and 0. So lines 1, 3, 5, and 7 will be true, and lines 2, 4, 6, and 8 will be false. Okay, now I can get rid of that, and we have a nice looking grid. It's a little bit of a behind the scenes over here. That's what I do before I make the videos to make sure everything lines up. It's kind of, I feel kind of exposed, but anyway, let's keep going. We've got a lot to do here. Okay, so I see not x and not y on the right, which means I'm going to deal with the negation for both of these because these just attach to one thing. So the negation flips the value, so 111000 is going to become 000 1111. For not y, 1100 is going to become 0011 0011. So the values are being flipped. Okay, those are all the negations we can do now. Uh, we can't do this negation on the left because we need to know the entire value of x or y and z first. But let's finish up the right side. Let's do the and. So we're taking information from the not x and we're taking information from not y. This is going to be true when both not x and not y are true. So the first row we have 0, 0 is false, 0, 0 is false, uh, 0, 1, well both of them aren't true, so the third row is false, fourth is the same. Uh, fifth and sixth row we have 1, 0, so both of those have to be 1, so those are 0. And then in the last two rows we have not x is 1, not y is 1, so the conjunction is true. Okay. Now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all this down just a little bit so I can get the orange arrows in there nicely. Uh, let's do y and z now. So remember this is going to be true by looking at y and z. Both of those have to be true. So it's true in the first row and the second, third, and fourth row are false. And the fifth row is true because we have 1, 1. And then the sixth, seventh, and eighth row are false because both of those are not true. Next, we're going to take a look at x or y and z. So we're taking information from x, we're taking information from y and z, and remember the or is true if at least one of those is true. So in the first four rows, x is true, so x or y and z will be true. In the fifth row, y and z is true, so at least one of those is true. But in the sixth, seventh, and eighth rows, it is false because both x is false and y and z is false. Okay, uh, at this point, now I can do the negation. So I'm doing the negation and I'm taking information from this main connective here, x or y and z. And I'm going to put a box around here so I know exactly what I'm looking at. I'm gonna make the box a little bit nicer. So I'm just flipping the values of this box. So instead of one, 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 one zero zero zero. I'm going to get zero 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 zero, and six seventh and eighth is one one one. Okay, so now we have our well-formed formula done on both sides. So we can do our main connective, which is the if and only if. So we're taking information from not x and not y. So there's the main connective under the conjunction, and we're taking information from the negation here, which is not x or y and z. So once again, I'm going to put little boxes around these. One day I'll get straighter with writing these. There we go. So remember the biconditional says it's true if both of them are exactly the same value. So the first row, 0, 0, that's true. Second row, 0, 0, true. Third row, 0, 0, that's true. Fourth row, 0, 0, true. Fifth row, 0, 0 is true. Ah, the sixth row. We have 1 and we have 0. These are different values, so the sixth row is false. But then in the seventh and eighth row, we have one on each side, so that those are both the same. Therefore, our final result is this main connective under the biconditional. So this is the final value for our truth table. It is true in every situation except for row six. And that is the situation where x is false, y is true, and z is false. And that gives us the entire well-formed formula as false. But in every other case, it is true. So that's it for truth tables. Again, you don't have to use this method. You can use the method where each time you have a well-formed formula, you write it incomplete in a new column. But the more you do that, the more space it takes up. And when you get to well-formed formulas as complicated as this, it's tough to keep them on one page. So 
What I recommend is if you have a pencil, it's perfect because with a pencil you can do little white boxes around things and you can erase them. Or if you have a tablet, it's even better because with a tablet, again, you can just do what I do and you can uh, select something and you can get rid of it quite quickly. But if you have any questions, as always, post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer you when I can.